Before I start this video, please note that Haspen Hotel is not a series for a younger audience or for people who can't handle dark humor, I guess. I say this only so YouTube's algorithm and really weird people don't sit there and assume I'm talking about a show for kids because I'm not. Animation is not always for children. We know that from Castlevania and other series like it. So this is just a warning that those who are younger or are sensitive to things like dark humor similar to Brandon Rogers probably shouldn't watch the series. Anyway, with that disclaimer out of the way, hey everyone, Blue here. Happy Halloween! Now, this video was a long time coming. Personally, I did struggle in the beginning to like this. There was a lot of drama where Husband Hotel was starting to release, and upon my research and even a lengthy Google Doc someone sent to me who was friends with someone who knew Vivs like years ago, all of it just seemed like the dumbass mistakes we all make as a teenager. So because of the drama, I really wanted to make sure I was supporting the right thing. I mean, I wouldn't want to buy merch from someone who turned out to be a super gross person months later because I didn't do my research, right? Obviously, I've done my research now considering how long it took me to review a single pilot. And I honestly think it's really stupid all the drama for it. So I'll finally be reviewing Has Been Hotel. Roll the intro and let's get started. <laughs> Aspen Hotel is a future musical TV series made by Vivzy Pop that released its pilot on October 2019 with high praise and slightly mixed reviews. Yet this series is not that new, actually. Vivzy used to be a comic artist on DeviantArt where she shared her OCs, much like many teenagers do on DeviantArt, where she also had a comic called Zoophobia about someone working in a zoo with a crippling fear of animals where hijinks ensue. If you want to know more about Vivzy's process behind Hasbin Hotel, link down below will be an interview she did with Pan Pizza Podcast that was actually really great and interesting. She even respected the light criticisms made towards her show, which is something you don't really see nowadays since most people like to think criticism is an attack on their well-being. Now that I'm done explaining the backstory, let's start this review. In hell, there is such an overpopulation of shitty people that angels come down once a year to exterminate a ton of people. In this universe, you only ever die permanently if you're killed in heaven or hell. Charlie, the princess of hell, sees these exterminations and wants to prevent any more of her people dying, so she comes up with an idea. She wants to help redeem people in hell so that they actually earn the right to go to heaven instead. Honestly, that premise alone is absolutely fascinating. Characters at a constant struggle with their morality are some of my favorite characters in media. So to see the concept of whether or not shitty people can change is actually a brilliant idea and brings a lot to the table. With the help of her parents' funding, I'm guessing anyway, and her girlfriend Vaggy, she plans to open up a hotel that'll reform demons in hell. Her first resident is Angel Dust, a adult film actor, and several other occupations that solidify this definitely is not a show for children who has an addiction to the very thing he's named after. Though he isn't showing much progress as he joins in a turf war with his best friend Cherry Bomb, which happens after demons die in hell because it means residency is open for a lot of places when people die in hell. As she's tried to advertise her tell in the news, shot down by a homophobic news anchor because this is hell and you kind of have to deal with the piece shit people in hell, it all fails because of the turf war Angel Dust is in which leads her coming home and feeling very defeated. Just as she's unsure of herself, Alistair shows up. Now, the show so far has been pretty great. It shows already that this is a show that's gonna deal with some complex writing here already. But let me tell you, things get better when Alistair shows up. Alistair is a sort of noble in hell called an overlord. He was a radio host, later turned into a serial killer when he was alive, and let me tell you that I absolutely love his character. Although he is clearly evil, he is one of the most charming characters in this pilot next to Charlie herself. He's evil, charismatic, lively, and so much more that he's definitely my favorite character in the pilot alone. He's just that 1920s pizzazz this series needed that I didn't even think it did at the time of watching this pilot for the first time. He decides to help Charlie because he thinks her plan is so stupid that he wants to see it eventually fail and her dreams crush. So he's gonna do that 
by helping her. He starts by hiring a bartender and a maid named Nifty who is the cutest fucking thing on this planet and together they'll work on seeing if terrible people really can be redeemed or shitty people doomed to forever be addicts to their own behavior. Now I really love this premise and I think the writing is actually pretty great for a pilot though it is still a little flawed. The pacing can be a little bit of a mess and quite a bit of it feels rushed especially towards the end and it kind of shows too much into a pilot but I think I understand why. It is just a pilot at the end of the day and now that we know the show has been picked up by A24 who will air it on TV so a lot of casual mistakes are made with pilots like this. I've seen quite a few pilots in my day and a lot of issues with pilots like this usually get fixed pretty much immediately as soon as the show is picked up. The lore in this show sounds like it's going to be very interesting. It's not the standard interpretation of Hell. It's a lot more complex than it actually is. I'm especially excited to hear how Heaven works and what actually happens when someone redeems themselves enough where they don't belong in Hell anymore. Overall, I really like this story. This is the part I really love the most about it. While the backgrounds are pretty damn red, I'll definitely agree with everyone else that maybe there's too much red. Then again, this is hell, so there's not exactly a whole rainbow of colors associated with hell. Honestly, just pick some more browns, pinks, and purples as those are secondary colors under the red tree, and that's it. I'm also sure the backgrounds will be adjusted later on too, just because assets do tend to change a bit after a pilot since now they have an actual budget to figure out what to do. The designs of these characters themselves is what I really love. It's like Tim Burton's early sketches, Metaton's EX form aesthetics, a candy store explosion, and that really great DeviantArt artist looking style we all love. Every character design looks great and fits their character's personality pretty well. A lot of the aesthetics also seem to be inspired by points in time, but a large majority seems to be the 1920s because that does have a lot of iconic designs in my opinion. The animation itself was honestly pretty fluid, nothing felt stiff and characters had that really classic sense of squatch and stretch to them that I honestly don't see a lot of modern shows doing anymore. Characters like Angel Dust are especially a treat to see because a character with multiple arms is extremely rare to see due to how hard it is to animate something like that, so seeing them come up with stuff for Angel Dust's other sets of arms is really great. While the color palette is good in the backgrounds, it could use some work. Character designs are pretty much brilliant to me, and the animation itself is pretty good. It isn't perfect, it's definitely not James Baxter quality animation, because oh my gosh, don't ask that of a mere mortal, but still pretty good. Overall, the animation and character designs was pretty great. This is the part where I was honestly mixed. Now, personally, I actually hate Charlie's song, Inside of Every Demon is a Rainbow. And I know I am gonna get a wave of fans telling me that I'm insane for saying that, but hear me out for a second. The beginning piano song for her song is fine. Her voice is a little too high that I can tell her actress is struggling a bit, but the beat is sweet, and it's kind of a cutesy theater kid charm that Charlie pulls off really well. However, the problem I have is the later half of the song where it pretty much turns into a rock number. It's so fast that her actress is clearly struggling, and on top of that, she's singing at an incredibly high range that even my tiny ass voice can't do that without breaking my damn vocal cords. The song is incredibly fast singing and high pitch with a rock score that I'm honestly not a fan of, and the song comes out pretty terrible in my eyes. The animation for the scene is great, of course, but the song itself was just really bad to me. Alistair's song, on the other hand, much like his overall character, is a damn delight. In my opinion, it's incredibly hard to fuck up a 20s inspired jazz number, so the song itself sounds great. It's basically a reprise of Inside Every Demon is a Rainbow, but 
actually good and jazzy. The audio direction of the song is great too. I like that they do keep Alistair's sound effect throughout the song, which is awesome. While I'm here in the audio department, Alistair's audio direction of having an old radio voice effect to his voice is just simply genius, by the way. I never see anyone make a character have some kind of sound effect like this to their voice, and again, it's amazing. But enough about me praising how great Alistair is as a character, back to the music. The lyrics for both songs is all right. Charlie's is just really thrown together in my eyes that I don't care for it. Well, Alistair's is all right. Though it's just a music video, I will praise Addict as a song because damn, it is a bop. I'm not kidding that I'm still humming that song sometimes when I'm waiting around for something. I only hope that Angel Dust musical numbers will have that kind of epic vibes that Addict did. Honestly, it kind of reminds me of Kesha's early work if anyone remembers her, and I was one of the few people back then who liked her music a lot, so... Overall, the songs in the pilot themselves were... not the best. Addict is incredible, but the main two songs were not good. I hope that the music does get better. I don't know if I could handle hearing Charlie sing like that again, if all her songs are gonna be like that, but I hope that every character gets their own style of music that fits them, and even the period that they died in, except Charlie because she was born in hell. I really love this series. It's so colorful, fun, hilarious, interesting, and brings up some really great subjects that I think are an amazing debate to have. Considering we live in a world where you called someone a stinky ditch in Club Penguin when you were nine and you're suddenly immediately hated for life because apparently human beings aren't allowed to mature and age anymore, I mean, we have exceptions, and Hasbun Hotel makes them too. They're not trying to defend people like Valentino from the Attic Shore and Angel Dust comic, or the homophobic news anchor. People like that in the real world are irredeemable pricks, but rather the more complex ones. The people who did bad things due to abuse, parental approval, snapping over societal expectations, and so on and so forth. People also criticize the series for other things, but in my honest opinion, it's all nitpicking to a point where it's more the ramblings of a pretentious snob rather than someone who just wants to review honestly or people who are a little too sensitive that they want a series to be nothing but cutesy rainbow hijinks when that's clearly not what's being advertised. Despite what others say, I personally loved it and its music video addict. I can't wait to see more of the series now that it's picked up by A24 and I'm excited to see where this series is gonna go. I think it's also absolutely incredible to see an independent creator actually making a TV show too. It's always amazing to see independent creators who started out small and end up doing really incredible things like Toby Fox. I just really love it. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. A lot of you guys have requested a review of Hasbun Hotel since it came out last year and well, figured it was high time to review it now that I've done my research on the series. Let me know down below what you think. Do you love Hasbun Hotel? Who's your favorite character? As always, let me know down below. Hey guys, thanks for watching! If you liked the video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing if you're new! And if any older new subs would like to help support the channel in any possible way, my Kofi page is down below in the description along with all of my social media. For any subscribers, new or old, who would like to help with video ideas or maybe just want to talk about anime or something, then I have a fan server linked down below. See you next time!